Good day Grade 12. Welcome to this final lesson in week 29. Remember we're only doing questions here based on the work that we've done this term. Next week we will still be preparing for your September exams and then we'll do some questions from the previous weeks. Right, so let's get started. It says, in a cell below, the nickel electrode is connected to a magnesium electrode. The cell is set up under standard conditions. Both electrodes are placed in electrolytes connected with a salt bridge. It says, write down the energy conversion that occurs in the cell. Well, the trick here is to realize that first of all, you've got two different cells and there's a voltmeter between it. Therefore, we can say that it's definitely going to be chemical energy to electrical energy. We're converting chemical to electrical. Define the term electrolyte. Now, this one I have to say is quite important because most students get this wrong. Most students think it's a liquid that trans allows for the transfer of electricity due to free electrons. It's not. It is free ions, and that is what they're looking for when they ask the definition of this. Define the term electrolyte is a liquid that allows the transfer of electricity due to the presence of free ions. Now it says which of the electrodes, A or B, is the anode. Now what do we need to do? We need to remember oil rig as well as um, oxa and red cat. Okay, oxidation is the loss of re electrons, reduction is the gain. Oxa is oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction occurs at the cathode. And then what we need to do is go look at our redox table. Now grade 12s, again, I'd really like to suggest that you make sure that you're looking at table 4B because otherwise you're going to get this wrong. So now if you look at your redox table, and you guys actually have to get your redox table out and have a look at it, you will see that they're fairly high up. There is Mg, 2 plus, plus 2 electrons is in dynamic equilibrium with Mg, okay? And then if you go further down, you will see that Ni, 2 plus, plus 2 electrons is in dynamic equilibrium with nickel. Now the rule is, if this is going to be a spontaneous reaction, then you need to be able to draw it a C like this. Okay, you need to be able to draw it like a C. Okay, which means that the actual reaction is going that magnesium is being changed to magnesium 2 plus plus 2 electrons. The nickel is accepting, the nickel ion is accepting those two electrons to form nickel. Okay, so do you agree that magnesium is losing electrons, so therefore it is being oxidized, and nickel is gaining those two electrons, so it is being reduced. So therefore, we can say that oxidation occurs at the anode, and the anode is the magnesium, so therefore the magnesium, or B, is the anode. Okay, now it says write down the reduction half reaction that occurs in this cell. Well, the reduction half reaction is this guy here, yeah, which I've just written down. And grade 12, please be careful. As soon as you specify the direction, you need to just put in a single line arrow. You can't go around putting in the double line. The double line arrow means it's, can, it's a dynamic equilibrium sign and means that the reaction can go both ways. But as soon as we connect it like this, the electrons are only going to go in one direction. So therefore, you need to draw your arrow in that same direction. So we've done this. Now it says calculate the reading on the voltmeter. For right, so therefore we need to use E theta. E theta is going to be E cathode minus E anode. It's always the bottom minus the top. It's on your formula sheet. E0 is equal to E0 cathode minus E0 anode. It's always bottom minus top if you're using table 4B. So then if you go look at table 4B, you will see that the nickels going to be minus 0.25 is equal to minus 0, 0.25 minus and magnesium is 2,37 
minus 2 comma 3 7 so that becomes minus 0 comma 2 5 plus 2 comma 3 7 which becomes 2 comma 1 2 volts and that's another proof that this is definitely a spontaneous voltaic cell because of the fact that this is a positive number. Right, so we've done that. It says now the voltmeter is replaced with an ammeter. So that's replaced with an ammeter. It says in which directions electrons flow in the circ external circuit? Write down only A to B or B to A. So it's, this is really easy. It's alphabetical. It always travels from the anode to the cathode. So therefore it is going to be from B to A. This is explain the function of salt bridge in this cell by referring to the movement of electrons and ions. Well, because of the movement of the electrons, and this is very important, again, in your salt bridge, there is only a transfer of ions, which balances the transfer of electrons in the external circuit. And then finally it says write down the cell notation of the cell. Remember it's always anode to cathode. Always unless you are looking at the hydrogen half cell. So the anode is going to mean it's magnesium. Then the magnesium electrolyte 2 plus. Then the salt bridge. Then the nickel electrolyte. And then the nickel. And there you go. And oh, you must remember to always write in one mole per decimeter cubed. Always write it in because that is saying that the electrolytes are at the standard concentration, the standard concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed. You leave that out, you lose marks. Right, and that grade 12 leaves us to the last question on this whole point, whole thing. It says the diagram below illustrates the processes used to manufacture certain fertilizers. It says study the diagram and answer the questions. Okay, so we've got the fractional destination of air, which is going to give us a substance A and hydrogen, where there's the some process, and we get a substance B. Then that substance is goes through process 2, gets a product, and we end up with fertilizer C. So it says write down the name or formula of substance A that is obtained by fractional distillation of air. So this is nitrogen. It's N2, it's nitrogen. Always be careful if they ask you just for the formula, don't write down the name and vice versa. But yeah, they've said we can write down either, so it's pretty easy. Then it says write down the balanced chemical equation of the reaction that occurs in process one. So process one is actually the harbor process, and this is when we take nitrogen plus hydrogen and we form ammonia. We form ammonia. And now we need to balance it. So we're going to multiply this by 2 and that by 3. And there you go, it's balanced. So we've written down the balance. And it says write down the name of the substance B. And I've just told you it. It's ammonia. We're forming ammonia. Now it says write down the balance equation for the catalytic oxidation of ammonia which is represented by step 1 in process 2. So this is our product and we're talking about the catalytic oxidation. So what are we doing? We're taking ammonia and we're adding oxygen. And what do we end up with? We end up with NO plus water. And that is a catalytic oxidation. We just have to balance it a little bit. Okay, so that becomes a 3 because now we've got 6, so then that becomes a 2. <sighs> did you ask for balance? Yes, I did. So then that's 2 in H3, so now we've got 2 nitrogens, so now we need to put a 2 here. So now we have got two and three is five oxygen so we're gonna have to have two and a half yet to get to be five and then we just double everything so we've got four NH3 plus 5O2 gives you four NO plus six H2O it's a nice balancing question that okay so there we go now it says write down the name of the fertilizer C that is formed with the act when 
that is forms when substance B reacts with, with nitric acid. So we've got ammonia plus nitric acid and it's going to form ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate. There we go. And it says this, what process occurs when fertilizer C runs into the rivers? Okay, so what happens is sometimes the fertilizer runs into the rivers and it becomes, the rivers become very nutrient rich. And when they become nutrient rich, they actually end up killing the river because what happens is the algae, the algae grow to match and then they basically because they grow to match they block out the sun and then they start dying off and then the fish die and then basically that water just becomes ridiculous and you cannot use it and the process is called eutrophication and you guys need to learn about it Okay, it's important, eutrophication. Now, it says the MPK ratio for a 1.5 kilogram bag of fertilizer is 10040. And it says calculate the mass of nitrogen in that bag. So the ratio is NPK. It says there is a 1.5 kilogram of fertilizer and it's a ratio of 1 to 0 to 0 and 40. So basically it's saying the whole bag is nitrogen, right? But what is this 40? The 40 is saying that of that 1.5 kilogram, only 40% of it is fertilizer. The rest of it is filler, okay? So we need to find 40% of 1,5 kgs, which is easy enough. We're just going to go 0, 0,4 times 1,5 and we're going to pop it in our calculator. So we're going to go 0, 0,4 times 1, 1,5 and that is going to give us 0 0.6. That's 0 0.6 kilograms of that whole bag is nitrogen. And there you go, grade 12's last question for week 29. Please come back next week and we can practice some more questions in preparation for your September exams. Have a great day.